don't go. Da, 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 da. Tell me now if I'm doing, doing something, something unholy. <laughs> Tell me now, am I going to the store? Making all it up. Doing something unholy. The days are starting this week. They's, the days have been starting Q1, but things are ramping up. I'm like, this is one of my favorite developing stories. Just continue. It's just a kind of evergreen story is that former Biden nuclear official Sam Brinton, who is who will haunt presents as non-binary and goes by they them pronouns. Not that that has anything to do with them being a klepto, but there have been multiple reports and video evidence that this person has been stealing clothing of women's from stolen suitcases that they retrieved at airports yes and this designer i think she's from tanzania and she lives in houston and she's a women's clothing designer and she randomly tweeted like two days ago i think this person is responsible for my stolen luggage from 2018 in i believe Texas or Las Vegas, I'm not sure. But she had a bunch of custom outfits in this suitcase and Sam has been rocking them for years. <laughs> like literal, it's undeniably her stuff. It's Sam like, has been spotted in her... Caftans. Her caftans. Her gowns, her jewelry. And it's like, it's custom like no one else has. And she does like fashion shows and text. Like she's been part of like the Houston fashion scene. So she's like... It's very uh, specific looks. Yeah. And there's a picture of Sam strutting out of Starbucks with a frap, frap in hand, peep toed heels <laughs> on, and this like bedazzled shawl that belongs to this woman in Texas across their shoulders, proud, out and proud. And jewelry, like, and has, I think they've like altered hemlines and like necklines to like pull it back to make it fit their body more but it's clearly this woman's and at first when i saw it i was like oh this is some fucking like republican trap to like just defame queer people and like trans people that's what i thought like it was like kind of well it's already been proven that no, that no, no. person stole stuff so no no I was no, like... no no but i saw that and i was kind of like they're just trying to add more few and then i was like no this woman is real she has a linkedin <laughs> She has fashion shows. She's like a public figure. And well, she also has like proof. Yeah. Those pictures. It's undeniable. Wait, but I'm also... when. What's the timeline of the stolen luggage? She... Well, her, her luggage was stolen in 2018. So they've been doing this for... But that was pre their Biden appointment. Well, yeah, because that was during Trump's... Okay. Regime. So maybe Sam was hard up during those times. And said, I'm not going to shop at Crossroads, the dollar store. No, thank you. Uh, Zara, who target what, where instead I'm going to go to my local airport's luggage carousel. It's giving crust punk. Wait, how do you, but it is, I have to say, do you think they just, sorry. Do you think they just stole Willing it like just were choosing a suitcase and hoping that they ha yeah. could would find I mean, a there, treasure trove of outfits. I did see that there is like surveillance footage of Sam walking right up to the carousel of luggage and just picking one off and like wasn't flying. Like he he they went to the airport with the intention of just stealing from the suit the luggage carousel. Huh. Sorry, I'm just adjusting this. I need to know how much how many suitcases were stolen in this because how would they know who the suitcases belonged to i don't think they knew i think they just kind of saw a probably like a hefty looking like a gorgeous bag and they were like if it's bedazzled or has like a little piece yeah. of flair on it that looks like right up my alley chances are there's something good inside i mean that woman had like she seemed to be like very elegant and have probably had like a really chic bag with like accoutrement that was probably appealing to the eye so i'm sure they zeroed in on that on the little zip it doo and said that's my that's my girl i'm just also like it seems so expensive to travel to an airport to well i think they were park in your car i think they were in vegas like i don't think it was like i don't think they i mean i think that it was like 
They live in their, Vegas? Their proximity was somewhat close at the time. Not sure, but I don't think... I think they just like went into the airport and was like, I need some fucking... Because I thought I had read that... I had read that they would... There was footage of them checking in, but they didn't check a bag. But then they would go to the bag check on the way out, like the carousel, and then pick off a luggage piece and then leave. I read that they just weren't even... They didn't have any... Fl- they just went there perp- like with the intention to steal from the like baggage claim. That's just such an undertaking. And well, I feel like you could... Unless you're dead thing? set on a stolen... Like this is your Ocean's Eleven moment where you could just get a high off of stealing a lo- piece of luggage and it's a treasure hunt kind of dopamine response. It just... like. I'm putting myself in the position of if You're someone said, yeah. I'm mind hunting now. Yeah. If someone said, go to LAX, travel all that way to just steal a random suitcase, like that is, would cost at least like $200 just round trip between <laughs> getting down there, parking. Well, I guess if I drove, it would be different, but parking. I think you could do it for under a hundred. Yeah, I guess if I drove myself and parked there, parking would be like twenty or thirty bucks. It's more about the time, the it's traffic. A time commitment and traffic. LAX is so far away. Yeah. But I think it it the fact that they not only stole this woman's clothes, but then brazenly Proudly wore them. That makes me think that it's some kind of like pathological thing. We need an interview. With Sam? Mm-hmm. Well, no, I think Sam... I think they were in court. They're in, embroiled now. Yeah. You can't I, do crime shit at an airport. You can't do the thing at an airport. I, they were being... There were, like, <laughs> photographers following them in court the other day, and they're wearing just, like, a very sensible, like, maroon pantsuit. They're and, going, like, full Banana Republic now. Yeah, and they were... The people were just hounding them with questions, like... How are, did they say Samuel any, Brinton did the thing? They said steal any more luggage lately. Like, how did the one was the woman's clothes like clean when you got it? Like all this shit, and just, they were ignoring. That's everything. a troll question. Trolling on all sides. I think wearing those in public is a troll to that designer. That's I, like fucked up. Well, it's actually good for her. Yeah, it's actually good. Yeah, it's great exposure now that well, now the she's pictures riding are high. put together yeah, yeah riding high shot down first but riding high she second. got her last laugh yeah but i think it's pathological yeah it's a it's a you're unwell but yeah. also you must be maybe you're, you don't you I, women's clothes are more expensive than men's clothes oh yeah there's no doubt that like it's it's hard times but were they stealing into their position at the biden administration we don't know probably well, once you once you steal one thing, I think you're someone that steals stuff compulsively. You found your kink. Yeah. You know, stealers have specific places they like to target. Like some people only steal from Sephora, which is kind of which is great. Go for that. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I'm Cap- not. Caper Lance says every woman has the right to steal from Sephora. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And honestly, <laughs> at th- in this day and age, okay, I'm gonna be real about something. I opened up a Sephora credit card like a year ago because I was like, I was like, I'm doing the thing. And I'm now haunted by Sephora. Sephora has gone so downhill, just like the presentation the and the qual not the quality of like the products, but like the things. The you walk in that store post COVID, Sephora is a petri dish. <laughs> There's Everything is disgusting. Really? It literally, it's like, not unlike, go, like, entering LAX. It's, everything has, like, fingerprints on it. Oh, smudges everywhere. The makeup's been, like, touched. Yeah. Nothing's getting cleaned. Everything's dirty. Picked nasty. over. Just, like, fucking crusty and nasty. And I'm like, wait, I thought this was supposed to be, like, a French high-end beauty bazaar. <laughs> and I'm getting, like, truly... It's a pig pen. You, CVS is cleaner than Sephora at this point. CVS is very s- sterile. CVS serves cunt. It does. Regularly. And those aisles, they may have stains on the carpet, 
but the aisles themselves and things you're touching are clean. Sephora, I cannot say the same for. Well, makeup places, it's like everywhere. It's like it's Yeah, like but crayons. it didn't used to be like that. And now it's very much like that. And I'm like, what is wrong with you? What's wrong with your company that you're allowing this <laughs> I thought to- you were going to say it initially. Can I tell you something? I steal from Sephora. <laughs> and I would have been like, no. I hope you keep on giving cunt. I don't. I'm not, I'm too nervous to steal anything. Same. I can't do it. Like I, I, I would never be stolen. sketchy and weird. I've stolen one thing once in high school, like a shirt from Abercrombie and I sweat bullets the whole time. And I was like, I, this is not for me, but I respect people that shoplift. I just can't do it from anywhere. But I can talk a lot of shit about the company that I pay. Like I use a credit card for again, this is Stubbs brain. Let's um, move on. Anyway. So I, I hope that they, I hope they find a wardrobe that they just like can feel good in. That's like their own. You I know? hope that they can stop wearing peep toe. The peep toe platform heels are, I pray they serve cunt. I pray they start they start giving and like step it up and like say no to orange lipstick. And just they could they could find a way to like to give. Yeah. Right? Don't steal suitcases. Don't That's steal suitcases. Don't steal a troll. Don't steal any yeah, at a fucking airport. That's it like, just sucks. Sucks. Anyways, I hope they get in trouble but end up just having to do community service and that they do amazing things in community service i hope they get a reality show that would be mage and i hope that designer in texas gets a boost in sales they should work for tsa oh like they love luggage so much it's like they like to look through it catch me if you can they'd be a really good (laughs) tsa agent honestly i could i i'm having the image of sam be greeting you at like they could wear a boot they could wear like a high-heeled can't you Boot. see them at like behind the desk at like JetBlue? Mm-hmm. Just, but I can see them by the it's by the X ray TSA X ray. No, but I'm I'm thinking more like front desk, We're like good. checking in baggage, getting your lifting the bag onto the conveyor. See, I don't think that they have enough goodwill with the public where you would trust handing off your luggage to them to then put on a conveyor belt and send to the right place. But I think if they are behind a screen staring into the luggage, they get get the voyeur fix of like peering in, seeing what's good, what's bad, if there's any bombs in there, (laughs) but their hands never touch anything. And it feels good for everyone. They keep their hands clean. The customer feels safe knowing that they have an eagle eye on the interiors of everyone's bags. And then the government and the TSA feels safe and, and then it, it works out for everyone. Sa- and then flying becomes even safer because yeah. of, because of Sam. Mm-hmm. I wish that for them. Yeah. Well, but in other sinister, they, them news, Sam Smith has been spotted on the set <laughs> of and dress like that oh season God. two. <laughs> yeah. It was a, it was been some, only a matter of time there before was, things got worse. Just like that has been gagging us with Sarah, with Carrie and Aiden, Mm -hmm. and now Sam Smith. Che Diaz has been suspiciously quiet. Sara Ramirez has been they're saving themselves. Quiet, yeah. They're laying low in preparation for the great Che Diaz takeover of summer 2023. But can I tell you something? What I'm like really excited to see Che again. You've been Stockholm Syndrome. No, I'm just like, Che truly caused such a like explosion in the community. Mm -hmm. And I'm just ready for that again. I'm ready to have my world rocked by Che once more. I think it's going to happen. I think think Che is heavily. No, I know. But I'm just ready. Like, I want more. I want the moment of like Miranda getting finger blasted by Che with like, that was a cultural shift. Mm -hmm. And the hey, it's Che Diaz. Which Che Diaz I was the first one to tweet fucking about. lighting up a fat bowl of weed in an elevator <laughs> at their place of work. It's a radical move. But I'm ready for that. I'm ready for that uncanniness. I'm ready for the like a comedy concert. I'm ready for comedy concerts. I'm ready for Miranda like being a groupie in LA. I'm ready for this 
fucking showdown to happen. Yeah, I mean, I'm ready for season two as well. And I'm ready to pot about it. Mm-hmm. But Sam was spotted. They have their own trailer. They're Things are really afoot. They're doing something in New York. I feel like whenever like a non-binary person gets a lot of like f- cultural flaming, Michael Patrick King says, get Cynthia on the phone and they coordinate on how to involve that person in a redeeming storyline on and just like that i think like I, sam Britton is gonna be on in just like that i hope so <laughs> i think sam smith i think they were getting blasted kind of unfairly like because they're not like skinny i think they're just annoying no but i think but then, like, I think people were being extra hard on her on their. <laughs> <laughs> people were being hard on her, but they they were they were being people were being really mean. And I was like, I, I if you were like a like, I think like who's that guy Nico Tortorella? Like they go by they them, and like they're ripped, and like people I feel like we're just extra hard on Sam because Sam is like bigger. Well, those out many of those outfits were incredibly ugly. As but well. some of them were kind of like, all right, that's kind of cool. Some of them were, but the majority, I would say, are really ugly. But I did just appreciate like the. I'm not like that song is like. If I hear that song one more time, I'm gonna run into traffic. But it's a good song to work out to. But it is. But it's also like addictive. It's a great song, and I the love course, Kim Petras. I like him. I go. I hope you keep on serving cunt. She's major. <laughs> okay. And I like that. I like that that song brought her into the more in the mainstream. And I like that it ruffled. I like that they did like a blunt satanic sex ritual and like made all the crazy QAnon people like freaked out. That's kind of funny. Cause it's so stupid. It's so like on the nose satanist. Yeah, it's not. It doesn't move the needle for me. Like, but I think they are. Sam is like. While all that is true, I think Sam is also annoying. Deeply annoying. So, And I'm just like, I wish that there was more willingness to serve like deep non-binary cunt on and just like that. But it's at a place of like cheesy earnest non-binary non-cunt. Let's hope and that- guess what? You just have to accept that. Sometimes that's just the way the cookie crumbles. And these women went from hanging out with fierce gays and now it's not like that anymore. It's just like that. And just like that, sometimes it gets a little cheesy. I want I hope that that doesn't happen for me. I hope I I hope I don't get into like cheesy gay you, hang territory you will we do, all is do. that an eventuality for all of us everyone becomes a cheesy gay yeah if you're a girl or a gay man you become cheesy or a lesbian point. or non-binary oh, le- you, yeah. event, you age out of cuntiness and into cheesy gay territory when does it happen when you're 50 trans people are always sort of giving they're like they're th- but do the do the trans people vacate the premises when you turn 50 and they all continue to, to hang and, and be serve. fierce and then yeah, they you do. just age into yeah. Che Diaz territory yeah. i think that's it <laughs> and you like the hang key. with sam smith mm-hmm. okay that's what happens that's what awaits that is what the awaits. girls and the, the girlies and the, the gays. girlies and the gays go comedy concert comedy concert making standing comedy concert Pride rallies. Pride Pri- rallies that just pop up out of nowhere. Pride rallies where the straight people sit in a cordoned off section. Mm-hmm. Or stand, sorry. The allies stand are basically in like a pen. <laughs> like, <laughs> that was unbelievable when they were all in their own section to give space. Iconic. We also kind of have to remember that that was filmed during like COVID, right? Like yeah. peak COVID. No, but like they could have... I mean, I'm they ho- could have done a lot. My wish, my deep hope for just like that season two is that New York is like the New York I, kn- I know. And it's not this like weird space station city where no one is on the streets and no one is at any of the restaurants they're at. And they're all at like Mendocino Farms. Yeah. I want there to be, a, I want the city to be back. I want the streets to be alive again. <laughs> they need to be in like Dime Square. Yeah. I want Carrie to like go to Lucian. Yeah. <laughs> And sit they with need like, to. Sit they with need like, to. 
the, all those girlies that live in Times Square. She needs to have one episode of being like a bad girl again. She will. They need to have like one. You know, they on Sex and the City, they always had every once in a while there'd be an episode where a character would be like, I'm sick of my life. I'm sick of my friends. Yeah. And then they'd go like hang out or dip their toes in the water. Ooh, Carrie hung out with like a bisexual woman and like Charlotte hung out with like lesbians that, and lesbians and like Samantha hung out with that like Southern lady who was a huge slut and like <laughs> and it darked her out. <laughs> yeah. And it darked her out. They all, the, we need that kind of episode. Just one is all I'm asking. We'll get it. Okay. Wait, really quick. I need yeah. to just recommend, um, it's a documentary on Hulu. It's called the secrets, secrets of, playboy and it's like a 10 episode uh 10 yeah too many docuseries i think it's 10 docuseries that just explores like the darkness of hugh hefner and playboy and it like is insane it's shaking me Hmm. i knew i obviously knew like nefarious shit was going down but the the stuff, especially about the bunnies that worked at the Playboy clubs in like the sixties and seventies, like the actual like who wore the yeah girdle, they paved the way, and the the ears. They were all being assaulted de- regularly, and like there was no. They had to sign, basically agree to never go to the police or a hospital. Yeah, that tracks, and it's just that chunking. was like grope rape era. They were being raped. Trigger warning. They were being assaulted on their way to their cars by vip members who would just like rape them in parking lots yeah and that's they w- i mean not to i and when i say it was an era i'm not excusing it but i'm saying like it was truly it was po- i'm really glad that i wasn't alive in the 50s or 60s where it was like okay to do that yeah and was like <laughs> alive more in like the 90s early 2000s where you might get raped like once or twice but lo- not like just like consistently Assaulted. Not like 10 to 15 times over the course of like your 20s and 30s. And it you also might just get two really good ones in. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but it also, t- it there's one episode that's just devoted to like the girls next door and like Holly Madison and Bridget. Holly, a survivor. And she, by the way, her. Bridget. The work Holly's had done on her face. Queen. Is Holly looks amazing. Incredible. She she's looks, remained the same exact age. She looks and better face. than she ever has. How does she do it? She has a lot of money. She's yeah. like twenty million dollars. Work. But she isn't her daughter's name like Rainbow. Yeah, that's really cute. She's. I think she had like. I don't know if she's still married, but she was married to like kind of like a scruffy like normal guy. But she, you know, she wrote that book, which I didn't read about her like oh, life yeah, as I his girlfriend, mm-hmm. and she was. The stuff she was telling was just like, and Bridget's in it, and they talk, and she kind of confirms what Holly's saying. It's crazy. Where's Hugh, Kendra right now? She's she has a show about her selling real estate. She's weird. Things, that show was so. I used to watch that show. It was so good. I was obsessed. Girls Next Door was yeah, so good. Amazing. Kendra's reality career took a dark such turn. a dark turn. I remember. I was her. Was it a TLC show that she had for a while with that basketball player she was dating? Was it basketball? No, or she was a married to an Eagles football player. She lived in Philly, and, and like he the, cheated on her. Yeah, Hank Baskin. Hank yes. Basket. Basket, and her son was named Hank, Hank Basket Jr. or something. Yeah, D- is it? Did he cheat on her with like a trans woman? I feel like that was part of the oh, scandal. Oh, I remember that. But then they did a whole Go reality on. show like during that era. And I remember watching it and being like, this is like, I'm peering behind a curtain into something I don't want to see and I shouldn't be watching and then never return to it. I think Kendra, yeah, she was really like appealing and fun for a while. And like, she was like this kind of underdog that you were rooting for. And then slowly it was like her life. It just, it, it was like, John and Kate plus eight. It started out kind of like fun and like wild or little people, big world where it just got really dark. The reality starlet slash like hot girlfriend to real estate pipeline or like kept lover to real estate pipeline. Big. 
there's nothing like it but holly it just it was just interesting and terrifying how she just the dynamic of like what it means to like be his main girlfriend and like all the other girls were like basically trying to kill you all the time because they wanted to take your spot not like actually but like spiritually kill you and Mm -hmm. like we're always gunning for her and she was just like Everyone was so mean to her, like in Hughes and her circle, like they all were really hard on her. God, I want a TV show about that. That would be a good like limited series or just like a series series. No, it was like complete course of control. And like she cut her hair and he raged at her because like he needed her hair was always meant to be blonde, but she wanted to cut it. She had like a really chic little bob. I remember her bob. And wow, he was just a pig. Imagine dealing with like a grumpy old man all the time. No, who's like. Who's a sex pest. Total sex pest, like total addict. And like. And then there's this one. Was she turned on by him? Was anyone turned on by him? She like, I think actually like. She loved him. Loved him. She called him her puffin. She wanted him to be like her. She. I believed in their love. I did too. And I thought that they would go all the way. No, that other woman got it. Crystal. Did he. He never wanted to be like married. He literally just wanted to fuck, right? Yeah. But um, then there's this one episode about this girl, a woman who grew up in the mansion because her dad was Hugh's best friend, alleged lover because he was allegedly... Bisexual king? Yeah. Wow. And they were apparently like, according to her, and I think it's coming, one of his other... Like they were fucking all the time and like they had this uh, physical relationship, but he was his doctor and he lived at the mansion and so she was raised in the mansion like as a little girl and like that's a crazy childhood and she had a le- she had an affair with one of the bunnies like one of the girlfriends of Hugh like when she was like underage they had like a lesbian affair wow and then Hugh who I was want like that movie then Hugh who was portrait like portrait of a girl on fire yeah and then Hugh who was like a father to her like tried to have a threesome with her and the girl when she was still like underage i think it was, it's just an insane series. Wow. You should okay. watch it. I'm checking Get into this out. it. Anyway, guys, um, really quick. Also, we went to a bazaar of its own last night. We did. Well, let's just start. We can pe- yeah, yeah, we can yeah. talk about it. I'm Carrie. I'm Lara. And you're listening to Sexy, Sexy Unique, Unique Podcast. Kleptos, Pump Pump heads. heads. Um. We were invited to the Give Them Lala event of the century last night. It was a bazaar. It was a pop-up bazaar. In in downtown LA. The row in downtown LA. It used to be American Apparel, Simon told me. That whole thing? Oh. It literally looks like a QZ in The Last of Us. Like we drove around and around like a block. It's like a block that's kind of like a cordoned off like apartment shopping complex yeah it's very strange in there it was also so cold last night we're being blasted right now yeah we were frigid winter rages on but it was warm in there there was a charcuterie as long as (laughs) as long as day and lala sheena and christina kelly god bless her were uh shilling their wares we talked with Lala for a little while. Yeah. She was looking fab. Looking great. We approached <laughs> Sheena because I was like, we should say hi to her. She did our show and like, it would be lovely to reconnect. And I just like kind of grabbed her and pulled her aside like quickly and was like, hi, like, how are you? And I couldn't tell, like, I couldn't tell if she was not recognizing us at first, which could be totally probable or was like, fuck these people angry that we were there and like miffed at how we made the guest list or miffed it like, or just shy or a combination of all three. I'm, I feel my theory after it was she sort of looked at us like a famous person talking to a fan mm-hmm. like thank you so much for being here and like being really you know very like media trained and there did seem to be like i couldn't tell if it was in her eyes like total unfamiliarity with who we were like she had no idea and then i was like oh she's she hates us 
or something. But then, but then Laura said, Laura, I think Laura telepathically caught on to that and started leading her back to like where we were like mentally. And I was she was like, like, we all have to find the light again, which is that we, we sh- supported and stood with each other during one of the most trying times of all history. our lives and in world history, which yeah. was the day before lockdown of COVID. And she came to our show and I said, I'm, I'm going to take us back there. So she said, I'm so grateful again that you were on our show. What a crazy thing that we all went through like right before COVID. And then I saw the flicker in her eyes and she went, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I feel like I said, I put my foot in my mouth or something and said, because I said, just be a survivor. She said, be a fighter. Don't, don't. Don't get COVID. And I was like, no. no, you gave actually some of the best advice that has ever been given. Advice that I think about to this day. Words that I live by, which is be a fighter. And survive. And I survived. And we all did. And you really like, you really turned it out. And I'm that is truly being real. Like I am will always be in gratitude to one Sheena Marie. Care. What? Go get him. I'll always have a soft spot in my heart for Sheena. And I always have. You love Shishu. I love Shishu. But it was funny. It was just, it was like celebrities. I couldn't get a read. Yeah. But then I feel like we ended in a really good place. So I felt good about it. And Brock was there and he looked really hot. hot. He's a big man. Yeah. What a night. But more importantly... Episode three of VPR, Mm -hmm. season 10, begins with a song where someone says, I get hotter when I'm bothered. Stay bussin', baby. And then I was like, she's talking about bussing tables. (laughs) I've been there. I think the music has gotten a lot better this season. I get hotter when I'm bothered. Stay bussin', baby. Yeah. Stay (laughs) bussin'. Stay bussin'. bussin'. You know that term? No. It's bussin'. Oh, that was like a big term for being like, it's great or like, it's good or it's giving. Oh, I thought she meant like, no, busting tables. Mm-mm. It was like, stay bussin. Stay bussin. This is bussin. Bussy. Stay la bussy. <laughs> um, I'm worried for James and Allie's coffee journey because they took things to a place of chocolate syrup and whipped cream. Very childish. It was a childlike. They're like teenagers. It was like tea time. Lisa visits. <laughs> she walks over to Peter. Sir is like, <laughs> They're setting up for dinner and I Peter. love her walking into a completely empty restaurant and going, Hey Peter and Peter's, you know, it's the night after he'd been dumped in quotes by Ra- Raquel and she goes, Peter, I think your pride's hurt. <laughs> she goes, Everything looks so gorgeous. And there's like mm. clown decorations <laughs> everywhere. La Boussy everywhere. Um and she- She's like, Peter, you had a hard night last night, didn't you? And he goes, I actually don't remember a lot of it. And she goes, be honest, I think your pride's hurt. And he goes, no. And in my mind, I'm like, yeah, because Peter doesn't have any pride to hurt. And she goes, he feels nothing and sees nothing. She goes, oh, come on. I know you've got some hurt going on in there. Let me take. Care you it. can be honest with me. I know what it's like. Look, I've never been dumped either. I know it hurt. It was like that was, <laughs> and Peter's is, is like bam, he's, he's completely like, flummoxed. He has no idea what's even going on. Peter, tell me that you're hurt without telling me that you're. Tell me that you're hurt with your eyes, Peter. I think you're brighter. I think your spirit's been damaged like the rudder of a boat. Lisa goes into the garden to talk to Raquel. She Raquel goes, comes charging in. Do, 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 do. I'm late. Oh boy, I'm, am I ever late? <sighs> she goes, oh, I'm late. <sighs> Let me go punch in. Cooking. <laughs> she goes, Raquel, are you late? And she goes, I am because, uh, honestly, oh, because of Graham. And Lisa goes, oh, I love that dog. <laughs> I love that little shit. Lisa views dogs as people and like Mm. the way in which she's familiar with them is very much the same as how you'd be like, oh, I love that guy. Or like, I love that girl. She goes, 
Oh, I love that dog. Raquel has a similar voice to Gigi Hadid where it's like kind of always warbling and like they're about to cry. You know how Gigi talks like that? Yeah, her like timber is much lower though, I feel like. I feel like Gigi Hadid talks like this. Right, but she <laughs> but she's always like sounds like she's on the verge it's of a tears. little wobbly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lisa goes, Oh God, well I'm oh, so go- God. glad Graham's okay. She goes, You really uh, you and Peter, you really lost your way. She goes, you're struggling, aren't you? You're struggling big. And she goes, I am ever since I broke up with James. And P- Lisa goes, you still love him. She goes, yeah. She goes, you're still in love with him, aren't you? You are. You're in love with him. <laughs> she goes, no, 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 take a breath. Take a breath. You'll make me cry. No, now I, you'll make me cry. And then she, I'm like, this is, this is rock. I thought Rock Bottom was crying at La Boheme, no. but no, Rock Bottom is crying in the garden of an empty sir before service your shift. hours. Yeah, yeah. Being late, stressed out of being late about being late to your shift to sir, and then weeping, having your boss enact psychological torture on you, talking about the one hot point that makes you like tear up. Then Lisa like dots her eyes. They share a napkin to like wipe their oh. tears away. And she goes, all right, now get back to work. You have work to do. <laughs> she goes, take care of this too. Oh, Raquel, can you change this out? Because you snogged all over it. Also, there's another part where Lisa kind of looks around at Sir. And she goes, look, look you got your whole life ahead of you. I was like. She's just so young. You've got your life to work here. <laughs> You've got your whole life. Look at Peter. That could be you someday. Look at Peter. He's Peter trapped his behind dream. the bar. Chained to the bar. Chained at the changed at the <laughs> she goes look at peter a little trap door opens up from the bar and he crawls in there and he lives under it that could be you someday his palms spread on the carrera marble of the front <laughs> desk look at him so happy look at peter he doesn't travel within more of a one mile square radius from this place that he could lives be your here. future raquel he has an apartment downstairs he lives underneath in the basement he it's a li- hundred square foot room with a small cart he lives at sexy unique restaurants in a bunker underneath it He's apocalypse proof. He loves it. He, he has loves sex all the time. He fucks his way through West Hollywood in the bunker on the mattress on the floor beneath North Robertson. He loves it. He films snuff tapes and give them to me. And I, Ken and I put them online. We have a huge business from it. That could be you. And Raquel You're goes. So young. What? Why? She's get to work, bitch. Now, get out there. Get. Clean this up. Run along, and she pats her little behind. <laughs> Um, Katie and Arena, 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 <laughs> Katie and Ariana. Katie Speaking and, of a bunker, they're shown a killer's lair for their <laughs> new sandwich. So they want to open a sandwich shop that serves booze, which is like, I'm here for this partnership. Yeah. I hope their sandwich shop becomes the next Mendocino Farms. But they're being shown this space, and it's like there's a toilet in the main hole immediately when you walk in the first thing you see is a toilet and then a toilet behind it they're like this isn't sir okay we need (laughs) an upgrade they go i love when she goes and you have outdoor space and it cuts to like wires hanging from the ceiling and it truly was like that cursed place like salad de kawanga that's on the corner oh like it's literally on a freeway oh shit i was supposed to go there once and we didn't go there no, you have to you have to say no when you're invited <laughs> to Slotic Wing. Any place and LA features this a lot, and this is why people were like, COVID's great because it made a lot of outdoor dining in Los Angeles. The outdoor dining in Los Angeles is not where you want to be. You're literally just getting like dirt from the road <laughs> by the one oh one sprayed into your face. It's like you're subjected to road dust because there are not like large sidewalks. It's not like Paris, where you lounge at a cafe, or even New York, it's like people speeding by and like splashing like dirty gasoline puddles on you. And you can tell that they don't. It seems like they don't love it, but they're like being nice because their friend suggested it. So they're like, "This is a definitely an option." I love them being like, "I think we're gonna need to look at maybe a few other places." And they're like, "Yeah, both." And then Katie said, "I'm really happy." She goes. You know, this was something Tom Schwartz and I always sort of talked about doing later in life, but I'm really happy that we don't have a later in life together anymore. That like, you and I have a later in life, she says to Ariana. 
Oh, I thought she said that. She said, but we don't have a later in life anymore, but I'm happy that you and I have a later in life. And I was like, I'm here for this too. I want them to go 80 for Brady. Yeah. I would watch a reality show spinoff of the sandwich sandwich shop. The sandwich shop. Sandwich shop. The sandwich shop. What were they going to call it? They were going to call it something. Like. I can't remember, but they had like a little name. Sandwich. They, I feel like Lisa's going to invest in the sandwich she's gonna, shop. She's going to put her grubby little paws all over She's going to be like, what did this shop need? Oh, some some a... fake vines and flowers everywhere. And an extra E, P-E at the end. <laughs> um, Schwartz, we go to his Valley Village apartment. Looks really stinky. But he looks, he's never looked hotter than in this moment. He unfortunately does look really hot. When <laughs> I was he's so... at his mental lowest is also when he happens to shine he was, sexually. He's just kind of muttering to himself while pouring himself orange juice. And his boxes, he hasn't has unpacked. It's just like a mess. There's a, like a very like cute girl staying with him named Joe. Him waking up at noon and pouring himself orange juice muttering it's just a phase it's just a phase it's just a phase it's just a phase over and over i was like something's starting but i want yeah and classically rest assured that when you're at your lowest point in life you can count on sheena to be right there ready to document every second of it he looked i don't know i've I've been I've been sort of like off. I used to think he was really hot, and I've been like obvious for obvious reasons, been like ugh, disgusted by him. Yeah, I haven't been turned on or felt like a tingle. I, t- I was turned on by him. In the they story. were showing the episode last night, the La La thing, just like on a projector, and we both were watching that scene, and we were like, "He's hot." <laughs> I yeah. did it. Yeah, but only when he's really sad and like down like that. What is that? He he and Sheena start to pod, and at one point he's crying, and that's when the tingle really started in me. And I was looked, like, I looked, would fuck him on the couch. He never looked hot. He never looked more beautiful with tears in his eyes, and he's wearing like black gym socks and like his gym legs shorts. look good. His legs look fucking toned. What? But like, I there's something him. about like a really sad man. Yeah. That really I hate gets it. me going. I hated it for myself. I was like, you know what? I'm going to note this. I'm going to examine it, unpack it. But I'm also going to honor it as my truth at this moment. Sheena arrives for shenanigans. She brings her potting equipment and she goes, we need to get your, we need to get you over yourself and maybe under someone else. <laughs> <laughs> the journalist of our generation. Sheena's basically there to just stir up shit. She goes, we are getting into some shenanigans today. And then grills him. Does a shoot, Mary fuck or fuck, Mary kill with Lisa, Raquel and Lala. And he says he would marry Raquel, fuck Lisa and kill kill Lala. (laughs) I think that this Raquel storyline is fake. fake. Yeah. Manufactured by production and all of them. Yeah. Yeah. But there is some reality underneath it. Like, they're still going to, like, make out, and they probably do fuck. No, they seem like they they at least think each other are cute. And they kind of are would be hot together. They look like siblings in a way. But they probably like that. Yeah. They both have the <laughs> same kind of, like, floppy energy. Well, I saw she posted a photo with her and Schwartz and was like, sorry i couldn't help myself and then katie was like you thought you did something with this and it felt very like (laughs) fake do you think though what if the producers are like making this all up but they're not telling katie they're like we're just gonna like drive her into oblivion she seemed legitimately upset she did but the thing is too that no one's a good enough actor on this show to pull off like except dowdy fake yeah, except Dowdy. But Dowdy, I don't think, is ever even... We need a wellness check on Dowdy. <laughs> we need to go to Encino or the fuck she lives. I know. We need to find her. Um, Sheena. So Sheena's like, uh, well, rumors. Say, there's some rumors swirling around that you and Raquel were seen making out of Coachella. <laughs> she goes, and you weren't even there. <laughs> what do you have to say about that? And he's like, I don't know. I was like... 
I don't. I think Schwartz is a lot of things, and I think he is evil, but I don't think he's that dumb or that evil that he would just like say this kind of shit knowing that he and Katie are like getting divorced. Like, it seems like that would be inflammatory. And then the way that it's discussed after the fact, it's like there are feelings of anger. Yeah. But it's like, it just doesn't feel organic. But I'm excited to see it play out. Nonetheless, Sheena's in a, she's in her matchmaker moment. She's in her Emma moment. I want Sheena to matchmake me. You should ask I think her. she'd be good at that. She should have like a reality show where she matchmakes people. She should be the new millionaire matchmaker. Yeah, she'd be great. She would. It's like one step above The Bachelor. So it's like she could, it's like she's made for that shit. To coach? She loves love. Yeah. James brings his beloved Allie to Sir for I wrote a ma- beautiful date. <laughs> I would imagine bringing the person you love to Sir when you work there also. Mm-hmm. That's devastating. He goes, want to get an appetizer? What's your favorite one? And her face just goes blank. She just like, is like, uh, and then she slowly goes, goat balls. And he goes, yeah, goat cheese balls. We're definitely going to get those. I wanted to be like, and watching, I was like, oh, she's never had an appetizer in her life. Yeah, also, like, that's a trick question, sir. Yeah. It's like, what are you, what, favorite yeah. appetizer at this restaurant? Lisa comes over and she goes, hello. She goes, oh, James, I'm so sorry about Graham. He goes, what, what are you talking about? She goes, oh. no, I know it's so hard. So Graham got a puncture in his neck that got infected. And that's why he was acting squirrely. Because mm-hmm. he was hurting james has no idea and raquel had asked lisa to not share this with james <laughs> lisa is just a cast member now yeah raquel goes up to that he goes where's raquel i need to talk to raquel and she runs up stomps her way up and he goes raquel what's this about Graham? like what the hell well i didn't know about this and lisa goes i didn't know that you didn't want the, um, I told him, and Raquel <laughs> goes. She was like, "Really didn't." I didn't really want you to. And then James takes her outside for a true cinematic conversation. He's he starts weeping about Graham because Graham apparently got broke out of a daycare area and tried to get under the little like chain link fence, dug his way down, and got punctured. That's so sad. And James went, oh my God, he was probably digging his way back to you. I know. I know. It's really sad, but he's going to be okay. But he's fine now. He's fine. If I could only just see him for even a minute, it would make my life so much better. He was my pup for five years. I woke up with a little fuck every day on my pillow. Raquel goes, I'm really going to need to think about that. But I'll think about it. And he goes, I'm still not over it. I gotta go. I need to go. I'm so upset about baby grab, my baby. Which um, I, I get it. I, would I get it too. And like, James would have a soft spot for like that exact kind of dog incident. Like, oh, that's a real lonely. metaphor. Yeah, it was such a metaphor. And I was like, this is connecting to something like deep down inside of James. But also, I cry about Mango like every day. <laughs> Yeah, but if that happened with Tony and he escaped and then tried to dig, I was like, I'm never boarding him ever again. No. James then, he goes, well, I'm out. Have a good rest of your shift. (laughs) I was like, oh. He's mean. That's truly the burn of the century. Schwartz and Sandy show up. They're like, oh, no. Like, it's we had such a good party, but now everyone thinks it's open. So, like... The optics are crazy and we have like a lot of shit to figure out. I was like, I remember this era and being like, it is open and then being confused for months. And then this like random couple walks in like thinking it's open and they're like, hi. And they're like, oh no, we're not open yet. I'm sorry, man. You also see an exact representation of what Lisa was saying where it, to Greg. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that is the skill set where... They are sitting in the restaurant being like, people think it's open, but like it's not open. What are we going to do? We have to get the menu and like back of house stuff. And some of, they're going over like 
Yeah. All these people that like, they're going over the people that worked the event and they're like, this woman did good, but like this guy was drinking, was drinking and like Greg really doesn't want him there. And he's like a real liability. And then they're just like, I love Schwartz being like, we have to give him another chance. Like we have the last say they're like fighting for like an alcoholic to be like part of the team. Of course. And they like truly are bad at this job. And then these people come in and then they just go, Hey, I'm Schwartz by the, I'm Tom Schwartz, by the way. And they go, Hey, come on. And I was like, this is the exact microcosm what she was talking about. They're clearly these like two, the woman was like a clear fan of the show and her, her husband was just kind of like, I'll go with you. But like they can't do a damn thing, but they can shake hands, they give a choose. good smile and make people feel like we really did this. I mean, when I asked for a photo with the guys at NASCAR, Schwartz couldn't have been lovelier. No, that is where their skill set lies. He put his arm around me and said, hey, Jax, get over here, man. And then he was like, you partying? And I was like, I'm sober. No. <laughs> Raquel, Lala, and Katie arrive at some... There's a lot of... They just... All they do now on the show is just go to restaurants. Yeah. They they have a little ladies' night. I love how much of this show is Valley-centric now. Mm-hmm. It's the Valley in West Hollywood. Where were they in this moment? Valley? I want to say it was the Valley, but I don't know, actually. Raquel comes running up. Sorry, I'm late. I had to run up here. And they all sit down... <laughs> Why is she always late and running? She's, she's just, flustered all the time. She's she has like bad a, time management skills. She's in relate. like Forrest Gump, just the running montage. That's her running all over LA. She doesn't drive. She just runs. She wa- runs and fast walks. Lala reveals that she and Randall have to communicate through like a, a court sanctioned app. And I was like, it's I bad. pray to never have to communicate with anyone in my life over a court sanctioned app. That was chilling. I would like that is a level of hell. Yeah, I can't even imagine straight hell. That's a legal hell. Legal hell. You could, I mean, that's gay divorce hell too. No, I'm I know. sure there are a lot of people communicating in apps. They're like, <laughs> they're using it like as great. <laughs> <laughs> but is it the kind of thing like you have to be sure that you're? It's like both attorneys are like cc'd on the conversation probably and a judge to make sure that you're being cordial. honoring your custody yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff oh i hate that um then lala i forgot lala called raquel dumb well so katie tells raquel that and lala that she's not happy with like sheena trying to like push raquel and schwartz together and she's like this is not okay, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, I mean, would you would never do that, right? To Raquel. And Raquel goes, no, 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 no. But then I think about it more. And I do like Schwartz a lot. And I was like... I love her acting. Love that. She goes, yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be like a serious thing. It's just like, maybe, I don't know. And then Katie's eyes, like, she's just like, yeah, I think it. I think the theory that she doesn't know that everyone else knows. That would be incredible. That's like mother. Keep her out of the... That's truly like the destruction of Katie Maloney. And then Lala's like, how could you even think about doing that to your girl? That is so fucked up. You wouldn't catch me doing that ever. And then she literally 60 seconds later is like, well, I'm going to tell you something. I fucked James. <laughs> when you were together. In the beginning of your relationship and the beginning of mine. Raquel's like, um excuse me and she's like yeah what? she's like i was drunk i didn't you know it was, i did a lot of shitty things when i was drunk but <laughs> and then i love being like don't step to i'm coming for my girl right now don't even say that <laughs> that's why i gotta step in for my girl and then be like by the way i fucked your man and then raquel goes honestly i'm more upset <laughs> about james being with ali a month after breaking off our engagement than you two fucking and Lala's like, so we're cool. It's not going to change anything about us. And she's like, no. <laughs> she's terrified of Lala. And then Katie, meanwhile, is like looking out at the night, just like. Katie's like at questioning the moon and the stars. She's like looking for answers in the cosmos. Yeah. Katie also goes, she goes, I can't believe like Sheena was a bridesmaid at our wedding. She goes, she knew it had been <laughs> and then so there's a, pissed. There's a photo <laughs> insert of them on their wedding and Sheena's going. <laughs> <laughs> she goes. 
She would have been so pissed if right after her divorce, like I tried to hook Shay up with one of her friends and I was like, uh, I don't think, I don't no think she one would care. Would touch Shay. And yeah, she knew it would be like, good. I don't want anything to do with him. <laughs> she was done with Shay. Yeah. When Shay, the moment he started struggling, she was like, Hi. um, uh, get your drinking like under control. Bye. <laughs> um, Raquel goes, you are such an effing hypocrite about Lala. Yeah. I was like, Raquel stepping into her power. Sandoval's practicing with his band to perform at Agora Hills Convention <laughs> Center. <laughs> Canyon Club. And he he's like in some practice space and he's it's like there's like a it's like he's he's putting together like the new arcade fire it's like a 45 person band it's a big band and he's in the middle and he sings really they have an original song that i was like this is good this is like his bruno mars moment ah! he has like a steven tyler like ah! and then james kennedy walks in and he goes oh so good mate and he goes Hey everyone, this is this is James Kennedy. He's the sickest DJ I know in LA. Everyone say hi to James and they're all like clapping for him. Yeah, I was um I wonder how much money Tom has sunk into this project. I don't know. How much money do they sell tickets for? I think Luann has a pretty good deal going because she has relatively low overhead. Did you see that someone threw up at her show, like on her? No. They blurred her face out, thank God. But Luann turned around and up. she goes, What's this? And then she goes, <laughs> She goes, Ah, we've all been there, honey. <laughs> True cabaret star. Yeah, she goes, Don't worry about it. Oh, I love that. The same night Dorinda got escorted out, I think. What? No. 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 No, I never got. So then we cut over to Sheena and Raquel meet for a hot girl walk. It's a new TikTok trend. You go for a hot girl walk. You say your intention. Come on. <laughs> Come <laughs> on. Like during the heat wave of the, of the century. Yeah. Walking around the valley. By the way, the storm, this, it's like spotless blue sky. Here. No, there's like so much. Everyone is like dramatic about the weather in LA. You last night, you were like, a cold front's moving through. We're going to see snow in the mountains. It was fucking it's cold, last but night. it's when it's February. I stand by it. It's not normal for LA. I was like, don't I say, it. say in like 2009 Miss or 10. Mary, was cold Mary, like this. Miss Contrary. How you does your garden love, grow? You love With weather drama. bells and golden chills and da, 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 I love da. You're going to see snow in the mountains. Miss Contrary. La, them dead. <laughs> have you ever heard of mammoth it's literally a ski resort laura it's fucking cold for la it's, it's cold snowing. but like okay snowing in high altitude areas during no, the it's winter snowing in pasadena well wouldn't be the first time <laughs> erica jane Miss. i'm like okay it's cold but it's not people are like it's gonna rain everything's gonna be no ruined. it's like spotless blue sky right now i know i'm just saying you're pissed you're no, I just, I'm, I'm like, let's just get cozy and not make drama out of it. I love, it's going to snow in the mountains. Yeah, that's what it happens in the mountains. When it, was the storm comes. In it was hailing in Bel Air. Well, Bel Air's high up. <laughs> it's winter. <laughs> Laura's new podcast. My I podcast is like so busting up weather concerns. So you say. So you say. Miss so you say. Um, Raquel, they're walking and she goes, she goes what are your intentions and then she goes i really want to lose 10 pounds she goes no oh my god no you don't have two pa 10 pounds to lose so She's, you want to tighten in tone she goes okay <laughs> she then films her and raquel and she goes raquel i'm filming you better say something what's up what's up what are you feeling and raquel goes i'm hot i'm a badass she goes, yeah, girl, you know, you should really talk to Tom. Schwartz only lives like three miles away from here. And like, we're thinking about pregaming at his house before Tom Sandoval's show on Saturday. So you should totally come. I'm obsessed with their hot girl walk. Took them straight to a bus stop where they just <laughs> posted up on like a bus. Bench. She's in North Hollywood. Mm -hmm. I've seen I've literally driven by this. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like a stop and chat at the bus stop. Mm -hmm. And she goes. Lala told me that she and James had sex in the beginning of our relationship. And she knows, well, you're going to say something to him, right? And it was like, 
I love Sheena on the beat once again. Um, Lala and Katie go on a date with the guy from Hotel Ziggy named Ty and his friend named Melrose. I'm haunted. Melrose? By Melrose. He goes, they sit down and they go, what's your name? And he goes, I'm Melrose. And they go, oh, wow, that's an interesting name. Did your mom name you that? And he goes, no, my name's Mel, but everyone calls me Melrose. And I was like, that's when I'd be like, thank you so much. Um, <laughs> I have to go. Thank you so much. I'm going to go. I got a um, call, but I'm going to go just walk right into traffic yeah. and hope that a bus mows me down and splatters my guts all over the street. And then so they, nice to meet you. They start talking and Mel Ro- and Lala's like, he's like, so do you want to me to order you a drink? She goes, oh, no, I'm sober. She goes, I'll tear this place apart if I'm drinking. So, like, I'm good. And then 10 seconds later, he's like, so, you guys, what? You going to get wasted today? And she goes, I'm sober. I'm sober once again. And then he goes, so, like, what are your favorite movies? And Lala goes, I don't know. Honestly, right now, it's Finding Nemo. <laughs> Probably because of her baby or something. And then he goes, oh, you know, actually, I think Finding Dory's better. And it just, the uh, everyone, even Melrose is like, the fuck? Yeah, because that movie sucked. And she goes, Katie, will you go to the bathroom with me? She goes, I'm going to go to the bathroom. Uh, Katie, do you need to go or no? Or you don't have to, but... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, (laughs) Lala goes, I feel like I need to abort mission. Mm -hmm. And they talk about how horrible this date is and that neither of them want to fuck these guys. And personally, I think that Mel is brain damaged. They were on ketamine. Something's wrong with him. And then they sat back down and he goes, so uh, you you going to party tonight? And she goes, I'm sober. I've been four. I'm four years sober. I, I was, was like, you are on Tina. <laughs> <laughs> I was also haunted by Katie telling them that she was married for 12 years. I guess yeah. they were married for like five years or something. Yeah. I was like, hey. Bury the lead. I'm like... (laughs) Leave that for a second date. Yeah, like, you were together. I'm also just haunted that they were together that long. I know. That's a chunk. That's a chunk of her life. She's a lot. They need to... Move... Cut ties completely. Yeah, they need to sever... They need to stop talking. Yeah. One of them needs to move. I think Katie should be like, you have to leave LA. Well, he can't, because what about Schwartz and Sandy's? He can operate it from Tampa, wherever the fuck he's from. (sighs) Tom Sandoval should buy Schwartz out and they should set him free, set him free. Like it's like, a he should live in like Orlando. I think he'd be a lot happier in Florida. He is a kind of Florida guy. Yeah. I think it's better for him. He can be with the triplets. They probably need him now more than ever. Yeah. He should move into a house with them and then they should do Tom plus three and do a TLC reality show. He would be the most popular man in Orlando. Yeah, he would plow. Or the gl- the Glades. Or the- isn't he from like the Glades? I don't know. Graham and James finally reunite at the park. I love this dog park, by the way. I took Tony there. Where is it? It's um kind of up by the Hollywood sign. Oh. And uh, it's a really gorgeous park. It's not necessarily a dog park, but people bring their dogs there. And I took Tony there like a few times over COVID. Is it near like Lake Hollywood? Yeah. Okay. But Tony, once you get him off the leash, and if anyone's around having a picnic, he'll bulldoze into the center of their picnic blanket and then just stick his face into whatever food is happening. Of course. Like, it's unrelenting. He truly needs to He is greet. He's a host. He's in little piggy in feed mode. He's a major D. <laughs> and they all give him food, right? Well, he, it's not a matter of give. They, I don't. No one consents to what he does. Imagine you're having a picnic, literally, and in the middle of your picnic comes a pug bounding in, just like flipping plates and going straight for like the gouda dip. He went up to Jamila Jamil. Yeah, she petted him. Mm-hmm. He played with her dog. Um, Graham is really cute. They're sitting on the bench, and Graham is clearly like he's a sweetie boy. But he's just staring at Raquel. He doesn't care about James. Yeah, he's always like positioned he's gone. on Raquel's side, staring up at her. And James goes, but, like, oh, facing she, James. He totally remembers me. He loves me. Doesn't he love me? He loves. I'm like James. He moved on. He's excited to see you, but he's mother's son. James is also clearly still in love with Raquel. Yeah, he's being so mean to her. 
she confronts him about the Lala situation and then he completely like attacks her. Yeah. Tries to turn the conversation on her, accuses her of dating Peter. And she's like, we're not dating. And then he goes, well, honestly, it all, it all went for the right reasons. Cause now I'm with like the person who's like the love of my life. So never been happier, never been crazier about someone. And then Raquel goes, <laughs> okay. <laughs> She goes, stop digressing the conversation. <laughs> but you're digressing the conversation. You're de-escalating. This. That's, but that was when I was like, James. He was escalating. But that, when he said that, I was like, you still love her. You're just trying to get back at her. Yeah. And you're being like so mean about this whole thing. Yeah. And essentially proving her point and her instinct to not want to marry you. Correct. Yeah. Hmm. I he hope goes, James finds heel heel. <laughs> I hope he finds heel. I hope he finds heel. Um, Sandoval is trying on out. His body is crazy. Crazy. He's Sandoval trying. is so hot. He's, it's I just can't I'm like, oh my god. He's trying he's changing in front of Ariana. Lucky girl. But also he's kind of I feel like he's sort of like phasing himself out a little from the show. Is he? It feels like he's not as like prep. I don't know. It seems he like doesn't he's... have like a storyline yeah. this season with anyone. Like his, I feel like usually he's positioned to have conflict with someone, but this season it's not really. No, he's just happy. He's happy. He's doing his band project. He's trying on like Harry Styles kind of like sequin shit. He's sinking money into various businesses and, you know. That's what you do when you're rich. Yeah. His bot, it's like unreal. He tries on these pants. Mm. He does a mm. high kick. And Ariana goes, God damn. Yeah. She goes, oh my God. I'm like, I hope they are finding their sexual groove again. I pray. You know, it's hard to keep things hot with someone after yeah. being together for like even more than like a year. Everyone, it's tiresome to like fuck someone and only that person for eternity. You got to find ways. You got to find ways to like get it back up for each other. But like, I feel like they seem with happy. Sandoval, you could do it. Yeah. Yeah. Sheena. Katie is doing her makeup, listening to Sheena's podcast with Schwartz. Just getting <laughs> fucking heated. Oh, She's going getting furious. <laughs> then we cut to the pregame of the century being held at. <laughs> she says that, she, well, Lala uh, FaceTimes Katie and they like chat and Katie's like, it's just like really fucked up that Sheena's going to find him at his lowest point and coerce him into f podcasting. I was like, uh... He That's could have you, always said no. And th when is not when is not the best time to podcast, but when you're rock bottoming. Yeah. And also like Sheena's just being a journalist. Yeah. She's literally finding juicy bits and exploiting them for the purposes of her podcast and her listenership because this is her business. She's like the Leslie Stahl of West Hollywood. <laughs> I'm like, Katie, once you open a sandwich shop, you'll understand that you'll do anything to keep your business running. She's just getting heated. She's sitting there a little... <laughs> Ooh, I'm gonna get her tonight. I'm gonna get her. <laughs> she goes, She's a fucking little fucking troll, and <laughs> karma is gonna come for her and destroy her goddamn life. And I was like, Oh my god. god. I was like, You need to confront your ex husband and this realize what I, this is why you got divorced. This is when I miss like Dodie. Yeah, Dodie would be like Team Katie, die <sighs> hard. Jody would be smoking cigs furiously. We got to get her. Also, like, Katie doing her makeup on the floor is such a throwback to Dodie's floor days. I know. When she lived with James in an apartment and just had to do her makeup on the floor <laughs> and straighten her hair. I was like, they really... It's, it's giving you, 2014. You can take the girls out of floor era, but you can't <laughs> take floor era out of the girls. They will... You can, you can give them a little money. You can give them a chair. You can give them a whole separate bedroom. They will sit on a floor to the end of time. At the pregame, Sheena arrives with Brock and Raquel. And Tom's she, apartment was built for a pregame. Oh, That's yeah. That's the only purpose apartments like that serve. By the way, it's like 3 p.m. 
<laughs> Sheena tells Schwartz that Katie has f- not only fucked her junior high love of her life. lover, but she's also like going on dates left and right. Mm-hmm. And she's like, yeah, it happened all the time. It happened last week. <laughs> and Tom's like, Katie's getting hers. Why don't you get her? Why don't you get yours? And he goes, oh, oh, whoa. That's like, whoa. Raquel's pregame outfit. Call to Cedars. I don't understand the trend of cutting off a sweatshirt above your own tits. No, it's and really... wearing it like a little. It's like a football player's yeah. like in the eighties warm up. It's a hot look, I guess, for like a guy. It's just very Gen Z. It's re- it's a Gen Z move that I don't abide by. Sheena goes, you know what? You know what? I'm not sorry for doing things with my heart. <laughs> and I was like, Sheena is here for love mm-hmm. and she's a champion of she's, love she was just like such a double standard i'm like sheena she's a men's rights activist <laughs> you need to get yours too it's like not fair like why can't you do it like she's out getting there like what's the double standard like she why goes, do you have to do it when do you want to start living your life for you and i was like that's a great question this is i genuinely wrote this because there's a part where like raquel and schwartz are like flirting a little and like they grab each they other's come. hands and I went, I went, oh, they're playing with fire. They are. When Raquel said, your ex-wife is overreacting a lot. I was like, you have thrown down the gauntlet with calling her an ex-wife first and foremost. And then saying she's being hysterical. Overreacting. Basically. Don't tell, don't tell, especially Katie that. Yeah. And even Tom says that. <laughs> he shudders. Yeah. This I just wrote this late afternoon ass performance. <laughs> Sandoval's performing in Agora Hills, which is like kind of near Malibu, right? Yeah, it's like all like Woodland Calabasas. Hills, Calabasas, Agora Hills, like all in that same kind of. They show up at like a strip mall, like a kind of like wooden bougie strip mall. I do love the wooden bougie strip malls of that area yeah, like of town. Malibu Country Mart. And I think that place is actually really nice. James goes back at the Canyon Club, struts in with Allie on his arm. And there's a girl standing like waiting for the club to open who sees them walk by and her jaw is literally on the floor. There's fans. She's never been more starstruck than in that moment beholding James Kennedy and his girlfriend, Allie, beautiful love of his life. <laughs> <laughs> there, No, there's like groupies of Sandoval. Mm-hmm. There's like people who like like fans like, I mean... Look, I get it. I, I understand the giddiness when it comes to interacting with Sandoval. My my reaction and instinct is to just say nothing and go completely silent because it's either that or being like that girl who was like, I'm here with Tom Sandoval. Oh my God. Sandoval, what do you think? <laughs> like, because he is just incredible. Like, he's just, I don't think anyone understands no, he's who really, hasn't really seen sexy. him in person. He's so hot. And he's really charismatic. And like, he's just like... You're just never going to know until you know. Yeah. You just <laughs> know. <laughs> but it's also this like very alcoholic bar. It's like no windows. Dark as shit. Yeah. It's a real all... 5 p.m.er. Mm-hmm. And then, then we cut the, the Schwartz crew is riding on over in an SUV. They're probably drinking in the car, taking roadies. Talking about will they or won't they make out mm-hmm. and like the politics of make outs. Schwartz goes, even a bad makeouts are like pizza. Even a bad one's good sometimes. And I'm like, a makeout with you is going to always be like a bad pizza <laughs> because you're probably blackout and you just have a fish tongue. <laughs> <laughs> what? And then Katie gets, Katie's like in the bar just getting heated up about Sheena. Ooh, she's steamed. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, I'm going to yell at her when she comes here. I'm going to confront her. She based on my shit list. They all walk in smug as a bug in a rug and Katie greets everyone warmly and then won't even Sheena goes, "Hey, speak to Sheena." And she goes and they smile at each other and then Sheena just like turns and eye rolls and I was like, oh, "I love it when Sheena gets an eye roll smirk mode." And then Tom sh- greets Katie and he goes, "Hey, Bubba." I was like, you need to, sh- that Bubba is the, like, that has to stop. Well, they're acting like they're still together. Yeah. Basically what Katie wants, and it's I st- get this, is an open relationship where she can fuck whoever she wants and get those intimacy, sexual 
um, emotional needs met outside of the relationship, but still has the security of knowing like this man's completely dependent on her and only it cares for her. Yeah, it's gonna like she needs to prepare herself like for the rest of her life. She's gonna be handling him. I think. Yeah, I think that's why they have to do a, like a total break. And even if it is all acting, I'm like it still is just a bad look to look like this perturbed about the situation. Katie finally confronts Gina and she goes, you and your podcast are so gross. She goes, you and your podcast need to stop. And Gina goes, what? She oh my God. Being a good podcaster. I'm just doing my job. Like I just was talking to him. What? Like you said in Vegas, you want her to like, you want him to move on. You'd be glad for him to move on. She goes, Vegas, I don't care. I don't care what he said, Vegas. You said that. She was like, yeah. She's like, you said that at the opening of Lisa's restaurant at Caesars in Vegas. <laughs> And she goes, shut, Lisa, shut up, <laughs> shut up. She goes, shut up, you little fucking bitch. Fucking Vegas. kill you. Fucking. Was, uh, what? This is my fuck. high school junior high. Was, <laughs> <laughs> and Ariana's like, no one's ever mad at Tom. And I was like, that's true. Fine. Yeah, she goes, she goes, why? I've been saying this for years. No one is mad at Tom ever. They always find ways to blame other people for his shitty behavior. I was like. Someone said it. That's because Tom does the thing I was reading about recently called strategic incompetence, where he acts like, An oh, idiot. shucks, who, me? Or like he doesn't get something in order to get out of having to take any responsibility for it. Yeah, it's really cunning. Yeah. And it works because Katie whoa, strolls up to Tom and she goes, I hate that bitch <laughs> about yeah. Sheena. Oh, I fucking hate her. And he goes, oh, oh, what, what, what's going on? Why, why, I didn't know you were mad. She's like, I can't believe you talk to him. I can't believe you her And every time she like talks to, to him, he's like, <gasps> like flinching. And I was like, oh my God, this is so horrible for both of you to participate in this yeah. dynamic at this point is like sad. He's and beneath do- both of you. He did the podcast to get under her skin. Yeah. And he can't. Because he, he, he wants her attention. And he can't take a sense of like agency over no. his own feelings and has to be like bashful about them or go round yeah. about. I mean, I would say that even he's agreeing to this storyline and she's agreeing to this storyline as a way to perpetuate their toxic dynamic yeah. that is ultimately what they spiritually want. and emotionally unhealthy for both of them. And it's what they want most. Yeah. It can't feel good, even if you are like over someone or over the relationship and like you're doing this dynamic like storyline for money or whatever. It still wouldn't feel good to have to have these fights with someone on no. camera and have it sold and billed as like this is the state of the union of your lives. And she calls Sheena a troll. And Sheena goes, whatever, whatever. And then Sheena goes, crawl back under your bridge, bitch. <laughs> great ending to an episode wow but then james one last time goes up to raquel and he goes i honestly felt a little drained after the conversation we had yesterday and raquel goes i felt drained as well honestly and then they argue about who should be more drained <laughs> and then he's like sheena's like you have to stop like coming for her like blah blah, blah. and he goes you're trying to hook her up with fucking tom schwartz like fuck you little miss sheena little miss pumpkin pie over here go off miss pumpkin pie go go miss pumpkin pie he's like sweet on the surface but rotting from the inside i was like pumpkin pie is delicious and it's made of just like chemicals. I love pumpkin pie. It doesn't rot shut up james it's good yeah miss fucking pumpkin pie it was a great episode yeah it was like a felt like a real throwback it was good i'm a little bit miffed at like the fake storylines just because i'm yeah. i'm sensitive to fakery i want it to be real but anti- i'm gonna try and work through it you're real i'm keeping it real you keep you're healing you're on a, I'm healing, on a journey. healing journey and i'm just trying to keep it real with vanderbump rules mm-hmm. and also i will say I feel it feels weird to go from like an event with Sheena and Lala into then watching a show. Like it feel it's flying too close. I know. It's flying a little too close. I was like, "Eh." I got a little spooked. We might have to keep some distance. I think keeping a little distance is good. I don't want to go the way of like. Well, it's just like I 
can't think of anyone as like a real human being. No, we yeah we I have need to, to think of them in terms of like we doing have to the show. Sense. That was a little. It was fun, but it was a little too per- like up and close and personal. It scares me a it little bit. It scared me. It made me like, oh no, what's happening to us? Well, it, it's just I get in a place where I'm really uncomfortable where then I start thinking about everything I've ever said about anyone that's on the show. And I'm like, oh my God, like, yeah. why yeah. am I here right now? Oh my God. Oh my God. I am honestly but also, a little like, drained. But also it was really nice for her to invite us. Yeah. No, for sure. I was grateful. And I got baby gear for my best friend's daughters from the Give Them Lala baby line. And that's all that matters. And you know what? Consumerism at the end of the day is wins. the only thing that matters. Capitalism wins again. Guys. Subscribe to our Patreon. You get a bonus episode every week. Videos when my internet is back up and running and I can like upload more than. Follow us on TikTok. <sighs> TikTok is where it's all happening. YouTube, also where it's all happening. Things are being posted. Videos and best moments are being shared. And memories are being made. All in the Sex Unique podcast. Toodaloo. Love and light.